Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome. We're going to start today's session as we always do, just checking in, dropping in, becoming present to the here and now. So I'll invite you just to close down your eyes with me. And just start by taking a deep breath in. And letting it all go. Take a few more breaths. Just to center yourself. Become aware of yourself. You might like to start by becoming aware of your body. Muscles in your face, your shoulders, your belly, your bum on the seat. Just become aware of your body, aware of the fact that you have a body. You can drop a level deeper, become aware of your mind, become aware of your thoughts, become aware of how you're feeling. Simply become aware of the fact that you have this more subtle layer of yourself just behind the physical. You've got the mental and the emotional. So just start to connect with that part of yourself. Notice how the thoughts come and the thoughts go. It's transient. Always changing. You can take another deep breath in. As you let go of your breath, I wonder if you could go a layer deeper to the awareness that sits just behind the thoughts, just behind the feelings. I wonder if you can connect with that very clear, open, expansive sense of awareness. Letting go of your mind just for a moment. Letting go of the physical body just for a moment. And connecting with that very expansive, very clear, very light place. You can take another deep breath in, bringing your awareness back up into the mind, back up into the physical, back up into the present. Become aware of your body once again. Make any movements, any subtle movements in the body that feel good for you, that feel necessary. Bring a little smile to your face if you can. Give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back for 
even creating that small amount of space with me just then. Cool, great work. When you're ready, you can open up your eyes. Now, I always like to start the session like that because it helps us to connect with that deeper part of ourself. It helps us to connect with a sense of who we really are or what we really are behind the physical, behind the mental, behind the emotional. Uh, it helps us to like develop that relationship with that more expansive place within us, that more aware, that more conscious place within us. It's very deep. It's a deep spring <laughs> that provides. And so I like to start by going there. Now, what we're going to cover today is awakening, healing, and creating. So uh, I appreciate you guys being with me here today, and I'm excited to get stuck in. We're going to go through a little bit of a journey. Now, this journey is something that I've been refining and crystallizing and um, working on for years within my teaching and within my own self-development journey and within my coaching. Um, I used to run a coaching program and it would go through a process of self-discovery, self-transformation and self-mastery. And I know some of the guys in the program right uh, in this call right now have been through that program with me. But recently I've decided to change the language around uh, as it feels more aligned. And so we're changing the self-discovery process to awakening. We're changing the self-transformation process to healing. And we're changing the self-mastery process to creating. And I'm going to walk you guys through each of those today in a kind of mini series. So we're going to dive deep and we're going to start with awakening because I believe that this is the first step, right? This is the first thing that needs to happen. You need to wake up from the dream that you're living in. Because <laughs> I honestly believe that the reality that we live in is kind of like an illusion. Yeah, the physical world is is kind of like a dream. And we can wake up to higher levels of awareness. And we just did that actually <laughs> in the, the short meditation that we did this morning, right? We went from physical, you rocked up here, you're looking at your laptop, you're looking at me maybe, looking at other people in the group. And there's a physical aspect to the world, right? So we when we arrived here in this physical aspect and we closed our eyes, we went back into a more deeper awareness of our thoughts, of our emotions. And this is kind of like a more subtle aspect of our self. Right? And there's actually a layer back even further than that, which is just the awareness that holds everything, right? This is kind of like your soul. So it's important to realize you have a body, but you are not your body. Right? You have a mind, but you also not the mind. What you are is something much deeper than that, something much more expansive, something much more beautiful and whole and complete. That's the, the soul or the, the consciousness or the awareness that kind of like holds everything in place. So if you're new to my work, maybe you, you're coming on here and you're like, man, I have a busy mind. Uh, where I'm overthinking or I'm getting stuck in negative thought patterns or I have anxiety or I'm always frustrated, I'm always angry, right? <clears throat> and so you've got, you seem to have these problems, right? Very, it's very common. People who, you know, come and do some work with me, that they, they have these kinds of common, uh, common problems. So I want to share with you today that all of those problems, they're actually, they only live in the physical and, all, and in the, the kind of the subtle, the mental and emotional. But if you develop a belief that you actually are not your mind, then it doesn't matter if your mind is busy or not because you are not that. <laughs> so a lot of people say I have a busy mind, I'm overthinking a lot, uh, really struggling with anxiety or struggling with all these different things, um, frustration, anger, struggling with my emotions, struggling with my thoughts. Generally, these are the common problems. So the first thing that I like to help people with is actually getting beyond all of that getting back behind all of that because when you're in it 
you're really in it, right? And it feels like you're in it and it feels like the world's coming down and it feels like, oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> it can feel like the most horrible experience in the world. It almost feels like hell, right? And I understand that. I've been there before. I get it, right? I've talked to lots of people who are, who are, who are working through it. I know it's hard. And so really, when you can wake up to uh, uh, an awareness that's that's behind all of the struggle, that's behind all of the problems, you can almost like detach yourself from it and start to see it from a different perspective, right? You wake up to it. You wake up from the dream or the nightmare. Some people living in a nightmare, <laughs> not a dream, right? And so it's like, okay, well, wake up, wake up from the dream, wake up from the nightmare, and what does that mean? It means to connect back into a place of pure awareness. Awareness is going to be your superpower. Awareness is your superpower. Right? Awareness is your superpower. So to become aware of what you're experiencing, to, come, to become aware of yourself, to become aware of your thoughts and your feelings, it's like if you've ever read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, he, he, one of the opening sentences of the book is something that really hit home for me uh, and I'll never forget it. He kind of says, you know, if you're aware of yourself, like who is the awareness um, and who is the self? What's the difference? That How can you be aware of yourself? He, 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 he mentions this. Uh, he tells this story of when he had his awakening experience and he became aware of himself. And he was like, how can I be aware of myself? How does that even work, right? There must It implies that there must be these two parts. If I can be aware of myself, then what's the I and what's the self? And that's a really profound question to consider. What is the I and what is the self? If I am aware of myself, then who am I and who is myself? <laughs> so this is awakening, right? The, the self is essentially the idea um, you know, you could you could kind of call it the ego in the West. People call it the ego. Um, it's the, like the physical. It's the mental. It's all the ideas about who you are. It's your personality. Um, it's who you think you are, right? That's the self, right? So, for example, I'm Josh Holiday. I'm a meditation teacher. I live in the Sunshine Coast. I'm wearing a white shirt. I have a wife. I have a daughter. All of these parts make up me, myself, right? And so you you know, there's a lot of faces here that I can see you guys have all got your own unique personality and your own unique identity and that's fine it's fine to have the self it's not like it you know it's something a lot of people think that the ego is like a really bad thing it's not it's just it's just your personal identity and it's kind of like a lower version of the self right the I comes before that the I is simply just the awareness of everything else the I is your higher self, you could call it, or your higher awareness. I am aware of myself. There's no, with the I, there's there's no real um, description that could like capture what it really is. It's, it's, it's almost like more than it, it's more than that, right? It's, it's this higher self. It's this higher awareness. It's the, it's the cause it's the experiencer. It's that consciousness that everyone has access to. And it sits just behind or just before the self. And so a funny question that I get asked, um, when people come and coach with me, right, they, I tell them to do some meditation and we have a few conversations about certain things and they eventually start asking me, well, if I'm not myself, like, what am I? <laughs> Who am I? Like, if I'm not myself if i'm not my thoughts if i'm not my emotions then what am i and who am i and i love it when that question comes up it's such a great question and i don't necessarily um have the answer for you but i encourage you to seek the answer for yourself because that's the only way that you will ever really find the answer you can't be told it you have to experience it and so that's another reason why we start with meditation in in our call today we get behind the physical, we get behind the mental, we get behind the emotional, and we try to catch a glimpse of that, of that awareness, of that I. And if you simply seek that out, and if you make it your, your mission or your purpose to seek that out and to connect with whatever that is, 
you you'll find what you're looking for right you will wake up you will have the awakening experience if you are searching for it right like they say seek and you shall find right if you set your intention a pure intention to 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 wake up and to seek that um that higher self to that higher awareness uh, the consciousness that resides within you and uh really encompasses all, all that is if you seek that you will find it so that's awakening in a nutshell from my experience so far and it's a beautiful thing when you wake up to that right and when you really w wake up to it right because a lot of people uh a lot of people have waking up experiences and maybe you've had one of as, as well you've you've thought okay yep i'm woken up or you're like oh, i'm not sure if i've woken up or not <laughs> um or no I, I definitely haven't had that experience it doesn't really matter because even once you do you continue to wake up to higher and higher and higher and higher levels i remember the first awakening experience i had was when i was really young i was like 17 um, and I had this kind of waking up ex experience when I, when I started to see the world a little bit differently. And I started to thought, wow, like there's something else going on, right? I'm not just, I think I, at that point it was like, I was just living my life day to day and I was stuck in the physical and I, I was unconscious and, you know, I was doing a lot of things that weren't serving my health and my wellness. And, and then I had this moment of realizing there was something else going on. And at that point, I hadn't woken up to total love and total unity and total peace and total bliss and like a state of wholeness. I hadn't really had that yet, but I had something happen when I was like, oh, wow, okay, something's, something's different. There's something that's not um, what it was before and I'm starting to see things differently. My, my perspective is starting to change. And so when, when that first happened, you know, I hadn't woken up to uh, total ever expansive consciousness all that is kind of <laughs> le level of uh awakening but i had woken up to something something i, I realized so there's something else going on there's something beyond just this physical experience and maybe i was just waking up to my emotions or my feelings or my my thoughts uh from a different level at that point i was starting to see the world a bit differently and maybe that's where you are maybe you've had uh, some kind of an awakening experience but you feel like there's more to it and that's really common as well for people that come and work with me. They're like, I know that there's more to life. I know that there's something else going on, but I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know really how to get there. And I don't know what, like I need, I need some guidance or maybe a teacher or a mentor to help. And that's totally normal, right? It's actually, you know, like that's been passed down through generations, right? This kind of like teacher relationship. And I've had many of my own teachers as well who have helped me see more clearly. So whatever level you're at, whether you haven't awoken or you're not sure if you've awoken or you've definitely had an awakening experience, but you feel like there's more, or maybe you're already like, I know what's going on and there's total love and bliss and unity and all the rest of it. Now, the way that you will know where you're at is really based on how you feel. And this kind of leads us into the healing aspect, right? Because once you have had this waking up experience, then the next thing that's going to happen is you will start to go on a process of, of self-discovery and, and you'll start to realize that there's things within you that aren't as they should be or not that they're not as they should be, they're not as you want them to be. Everything is as it should be, but you might start to realize that there's certain things that you want to change about yourself, right? And this is when we get to healing. So you wake up and you go, man, what am I doing? Why am I living like this? Why am I living in this like anxiety or this frustration or this anger all the time? Why am I always having fights with my partner or my, my kids or my loved ones? Or, you know, why am I working this job that I really just hate? Like, why am I living a life that's just lacking purpose? Why am I waking up every day just doing the same thing over and over again? Like, I don't want to do that, right? You've woken up to a different um, potential within yourself and you're starting to think, I want to do things differently. And what will happen is there will be stuff emotional stuff that starts to surface for you and that stuff that comes up is really stuff to be worked through because like I was saying with my personal story right in the beginning I was still you know drinking doing drugs like smoking um like never smoked tobacco but I would smoke weed and you know I would just do a lot of things that just really weren't serving me 
And I kept doing them actually for, for quite a few years after I had had that first waking up experience. Um, although it became clearer and clearer to me that that was not what I wanted to do. And it became actually more and more of a struggle for me to do those things. And I would be more and more in pain after doing those things. And there would be, a, there became this very loud voice in my head that says, don't do that. <laughs> Stop doing that. Right. And that was, I believe, my higher self guiding me towards healing, guiding me to back to a state of wholeness, right? Guiding me towards a more loving, uh, accepting, whole, peaceful, blissful version of myself, a better version of myself, you could say, in simple terms. So then you start with the healing journey, right? You wake up and you realize things aren't as they are and you want to start to change right this this is like self-transformation i'm going to transform myself i'm going to become the best version of myself but there's really a lot of healing that happens because generally what you'll find is that your emotional state dictates the life that you are living and it will really control a lot of your experiences so how do you how do you really heal and let's just talk about what even is healing Healing is a return to wholeness, a return to health. So I just want to put that definition down for you guys before we dive into this next part. Healing is a return to wholeness. It's a return to health. It's not some woo-woo thing. Like, you know, I know people talk about healing, like, oh, woo-woo. It's not necessarily woo-woo. I don't see it as woo-woo. I, th I see it as a very natural process of returning to wholeness, returning to health. That's what I see healing as. So let's talk about that. Because once you have this waking up experience, this higher self, um, your higher self or your higher awareness or your consciousness or whatever you want to call it, will start to guide you back towards wholeness and health. And there will be some healing that needs to happen through that process, right? And another way that you can look at healing is it's kind of like shifting old negative emotional patterns from your body, right? Things will happen um, through your life uh, and you will have emotional experiences to those things that happen and you will perceive them in a specific way. And everyone's different, but everyone's got different patterns, so we're actually in this healing part, I'm actually going to guide you through a bit of live coaching. We're going to go through a process that we can use right now that will help you develop awareness of what needs to heal. If you're on here, I, I'm going to um, assume that, that you know, you've already kind of had some sort of a waking up experience or at the very least you're interested in it. And so that's why you're here. So we don't need to go into any more detail around that. But with this healing exercise, the best way that I can show you about uh, what what it is to heal is to show you an experience of healing. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go through a process which I call shifting energy patterns. So shifting energy patterns. Because when I say energy, what I'm talking about is shifting emotional patterns. We've all got these recurring emotional patterns that we experience. Maybe it's frustration, maybe it's anxiety, maybe it's high stress, uh, overthinking, whatever else, guilt, sometimes humiliation, like don't want to voice your opinion because um, you're scared of what people think. Or there's just so many different like things that, it, that could be true for you. Now, these are all emotional patterns that you have learned through your life. They don't just happen randomly. It's not just randomly happening to you. It's 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 a learnt behavior or it's an alert a learnt response that you have literally learned earlier in your life and so what we want to do is we want to develop awareness of that and go okay cool here's what it is and and then we're going to change it as well we're going to resolve it we're going to heal it we're going to return whatever that pattern is to health we're going to re return that suppressed emotion to a state of, of wholeness we're going to allow some space for it we're going to move through it we're going to process it and that's going to help you move back towards wholeness, back towards health. So shifting energy patterns. This is what we're going to dive into right now. And this is going to be a very tangible process that you will walk away from and go, oh man, that was that was cool, right? I learned something about myself. So 
First thing we're going to do, and you can grab some uh, a pen and paper if you if you've got that handy. We're going to take some notes. I'm going to encourage you to come along this uh, with this process with me. Step one is to identify what is the recurring pattern in your life. What is the recurring pattern that's coming up for you over and over again? Now, if you've worked with me before, there's probably there, there may be something, or if you're working with me right now, there may be something that you're already working on. In which case, just stay with that, right? It's you, with these patterns, it's good to stay with it for couple of weeks, maybe even a month or so until you feel like it's resolved, until you feel satisf satisfied that, you know, whatever it is has been resolved. Uh, so step one, identify the recurring pattern. What is it? What's showing up in your life? What is the pattern that you're continuing to experience that you don't want to experience? I'm getting frustrated at my wife. I'm getting frustrated at my kids. I'm anxious about money. I'm anxious about, you know, my boyfriend or my girlfriend. I'm anxious in social circles. Um, you know, I don't speak my mind because of a fear of judgment. <clears throat> I'm constantly overthinking about this thing that happened in the past. What's the recurring pattern that you are aware of that you want to change? That's step one. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to write that down or another minute or so. Step two is to find the external attachment. So in most cases, there's going to be some kind of external attachment. You're holding on to something. It's like, you know, when I, um, you know, when my wife doesn't give me any grief, I'll finally feel happy and at peace. <laughs> or when I have more money in my bank account, I'll finally feel abundant. Or when I have that new job or a pur purpose in my life, I'll finally feel like, I'm good enough. Or, you know, when I have a boyfriend or girlfriend who loves me, I'll finally feel good enough. So the way that we find this external attachment is by finishing this sentence. When I have blank X, Y, Z. So when I have something, you can name that. When I have blank, I will finally feel blank. When I have this thing, usually external, I will finally feel a certain way. So I'll finally feel some specific way internally. When I have this thing, I'll finally feel this way. So what is that for you? What is that thing that you feel like you need before you can feel how you want to feel? Write that down. This is the external attachment. And I'm going to burst your bubble because it's not true. You don't need that thing to feel that way. <laughs> and we're going to get into that in a second. But you got to understand this is essentially a limiting belief. I need this to feel this way. It's essentially a limiting belief. It's essentially an attachment. We're attached to the physical world or we're attached to the mental and emotional. Like we're, we're attached to these things and it makes us suffer. It's like I, I can't feel good unless I have that thing. And it's absolutely not true. <laughs> And so we're going to get into that in, in a second. But I want to go on to step three now because we've got to understand that these patterns that we have, they come from somewhere. Like I said, you've learned them somewhere. So if you look at what your pattern is now, there's, there's you've identified the recurring pattern in step one. Have a look at that. And then step two, you found the, some kind of external attachment. When I have this thing, I'll finally feel this way. Step three is to understand from a subconscious level, so look at this subjectively, try to take your ego out of the picture for a second. When you look at that pattern, is it coming from more of a, a victim mentality, a victim lack, like I'm, I'm lacking here because I feel like I'm a victim in this case, or is it coming from a people-pleasing lack mentality? So I'm, I'm lacking here because I'm constantly feeling like I'm needing to give to everyone else uh, to have my own emotional needs met. Is it the victim or is it the people pleaser? Take a real honest look at it and um, yeah, you know, try to just quieten down your, your own ego for a second. Just go, if you were looking at this and it was someone else's, so you, you're, not, you're not attached to it at all, it doesn't mean anything about who you are, would you say it's a victim or a people pleaser? And then you can just write that down. So step three is to unpack the subconscious identity. 
or unpack the unconscious identity? Is it a victim lack mentality? Is it a people pleasing lack mentality? These are the two that are very common. And it just helps us to get a bit of an energetic uh, awareness of like, where is it coming from? What kind of an identity is it coming from? And it's going to just help us understand it. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that's who you are. You, you know, you don't need to um, really like grasp onto that too tightly. It's just for awareness. And then step 3.5 is when did you feel a similar way in childhood? Or when did you feel a similar way when you were younger? So write down like one or two or three memories of like when you felt a similar way earlier in your life. Because like I said, whatever you're experiencing in the present moment, whether it be anger, anxiety, frustration, those are the three big ones that I see so often. So I'm going to just use those. Whatever you're experiencing, if it's one of those things, it's it's be, it's really a pain that's being triggered from within. It's a pain that's being triggered from the past. So one of the, I would say the best way to resolve that pain from the past or what you're perceiving as the pain that you're experiencing in the present moment is to go into the past and look at where does this even come from? Like what part of me is believing that, uh, this is how I need to respond in this situation. So what memories do you have where you felt a similar way, where you may have learned that this is the best way to respond in this situation because something may have happened to you in the past that made you feel that way. So when did you feel a similar way in childhood? Maybe it's not childhood. Maybe it's your teenage years. Don't get too hung up on it. Try not to think about it too logically either. See if you can just feel into it. Allow your intuition to just bring up some memories for you. If you need to close your eyes and take a deep breath for a second, you can do that. Just tune in. When did you feel a similar way when you were younger? Because when it comes to healing, it's a game of forgiveness, acceptance, love, all of those beautiful things, returning to wholeness, right? If you want to be happy in the present moment, right? For most cases, people want to be happy. They want to be calm. They want to be at peace. They want to be confident. They want to be self-secure. That's probably how you want to feel. I want to feel calm. I want to feel peaceful. I don't want to be getting angry. I want to be confident in myself. I want to be secure within myself. I want to be able to speak my mind and say what's say what's important to me. I don't want to be getting triggered and reactive and like freaking out and getting all tense. I want to be calm. I want to be peaceful. I want to love. I want to be loving, right? I want to have love for myself. I want to have love for others. I want loving relationships. Like that's generally what you want. And so if that's not what you're getting, it's because there's some subconscious, there's some suppressed emotions, right? These kind of like energy in the body, suppressed emotions in the body, unresolved emotions from the past to be resolved. And what does it mean to resolve them? It's to go back to those memories and go, okay, well, I forgive my mom or I forgive my dad or I forgive that random kid at the, in the at school who laughed at me when I fell off the plot playground, <laughs> right? So it could be the most random stuff. You've got a few memories there and you might be like, wow, I didn't even think that was related at all. But it most likely definitely is, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a short little meditation. We're going to do a little inner child healing meditation. I'm going to guide you through that. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back into this memory and we're going to do our best to embody energy the energy of compassion, of acceptance, of forgiveness, of love, of even just neutrality, like I'm okay with what happened, right? Because I know for some people, right, I do this with some people and, and, and I say, okay, now forgive this person. And it's like, fuck no, I don't want to forgive that person. I want to punch him in the face. Like I've literally had that before. I try to do like a healing meditation with someone and I go, how did that go for you? And I said, I wanted to punch that person in the face. I didn't want to forgive them. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, sweet. So if forgiveness is too much for you, 
then just see if you can find neutrality. Like just, okay, it happened. I accept it, it, it did happen and it is what it is. You know, if forgiveness is too much, obviously, you know, forgiveness is a beautiful thing to aim for and it's a very healing thing. And, you know, it's a really one of the secrets of healing. It's like, if you can just forgive everyone and forgive yourself for everything, uh, that's the most, well, one of the most direct paths um, to healing. It's just like a total acceptance, right? People um, who are really deep into spiritual will say that like spirituality will say, you don't even need to forgive everyone because you just need to love. Like the, 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 the primary emotion should just be love for everyone and acceptance for everyone and a state of oneness and understanding that you're one with everyone, right? But that's like kind of a little bit further off the deep end. We can go there, uh, <laughs> you know, and I often do with my clients. Um, but we, we want to start with just some, you know, baseline stuff coming into just neutrality. Okay, this happened and I accept that this happened. Uh, and if I can, I'm going to have some compassion or if I can, I'm going to have some forgiveness uh, towards myself or the people who were involved in that experience. And if we can do that, if we can resolve those past emotions, the anger or the anxiety, the fear, the feeling of not being safe, and we can at least come bring those old suppressed emotions that we have within us, if we can at least just bring them to a state of neutrality, trust, peace, acceptance, that will start to radically shift the experience that you're having in the present moment. It will start to change the emotional patterns that you're experiencing in the present moment. I promise you that it's been the most powerful thing that I've seen um, in you know my own work with myself, my own self work, but also with the work that I've done with clients. So take a quick glance over your notes again. And then when you're ready, we'll dive into this meditation. So you can start by relaxing back into your seat and closing down your eyes. And just start by taking a deep breath in, connecting with your body. Deep breath in, down into the belly, opening up the midsection as you inhale and softening the body, softening the shoulders, the face as you exhale. So you can take a few more breaths in your own natural rhythm bringing yourself into a state of harmony, using your breath to kind of like iron out any kinks in yourself, using the breath to iron out any kinks in your mind, in your body, any tension, you can let it go. See if you can just find a, a state of calmness, a bit of a regulated nervous system. And we'll take another deep breath in together. Breathing in into the belly, opening up and letting it all go. And I invite you just to imagine the scene, the memory, the first one, the big one that you've got written down. Just imagine that scene. And just start to picture who was there, where you were, what was happening. And you're just observing it from a third person. So you as you are. Observing that scene, maybe you see your younger self in there, you see whoever else was in there, you see the place, you see what was happening. And you're observing all of that from the third person. So you're not even in it, you're just observing it. Take a deep breath. Find a sense of calmness in your own body right now as you observe that scene. And then you can start to get a sense of what your younger self was feeling in that moment, what they were thinking in that moment, what thoughts were going through their head, what feelings were going through their body. And 
what's the story that they were telling themselves about what was happening? What's the story that you were telling yourself, your younger self, as that experience was happening? What did you make it mean about you? Just get a sense for that. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, you can slowly walk into the scene as you are now going to meet your younger self and just give them a big hug or a pat on the back or whatever you feel like you need to console them. Just let them know that whatever happened, it's not necessarily their fault. You were just a kid. You know, your brain was still developing. You were still making sense of the world. You weren't an adult. You shouldn't have been treated like one. Just let your younger self know that it's okay. Bringing this higher level of awareness, the level of neutrality, of acceptance to the experience and really getting a sense of the fact that you were just a child. You, you weren't meant to know how to do everything. You weren't meant to know, you know, how to make sense of the world. You were still developing. You are still developing your own identity. You are still developing yourself. And at that point, you probably still just needed love and care and support. And maybe you didn't get it for whatever reason. And I know that's unfortunate, but that is what it is. So as you're consoling your younger self, just allow yourself to process any of those suppressed emotions, any of those feelings, allow them to come up, allow yourself to feel them. Take a deep breath if you need. All we're doing here is tapping into a deeper level of feeling and a deeper level of awareness. We're learning to feel any of those suppressed emotions, the unprocessed experiences. And take another deep breath. And just give yourself the love, the acceptance, or whatever other emotional need that wasn't being met in that moment, give that to yourself. If you are feeling scared, if you are feeling alone, if you are feeling afraid, if you are feeling like you weren't enough or that you were worthless or anything like that, give yourself a big hug and just let yourself know that it's okay. You are loved. You are accepted. You are enough. And you always have been ever since you were born. There's a deep part of you that is already whole and already complete. And this process is bringing us back to that. And now you can turn to anyone else that was in the scene, any other people. And you can just develop an understanding that they may have not known what they were doing. They were probably operating from a lower level of awareness probably operating from their own ego. And that's why whatever happened, happened. They were probably dealing with their own pain, their own trauma. And that's why whatever happened, happened. And that's okay. It is what it is. Might not be feeling great about that, but at least just come into an understanding of it. Everyone is usually just trying their best with the best they have. And sometimes 
the vest is really not that great. So take a deep breath. And grab your younger self by the hand and just take them out of that scene. Take them back to a place where you used to play, where you used to hang out, where you used to have fun. A place where you guys can just be together, maybe even laugh, maybe even smile. And just remind your younger self once more that it's okay, that you're an adult now, you have a higher level of awareness now, and you are going to take care of yourself. Now take a couple more big deep breaths in just to connect with your body once more. You can say goodbye to your younger self. Say, see you later. Remind them once again that it's all good. Give them a high five, whatever you feel you need to do. And then when you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. There's no need to rush back. You can stay in there as long as you need. But when you are ready, Take a couple of deep breaths and open up your eyes. Great work. Now, I know that might have brought some emotions up for some people. It might have been a pretty interesting experience for some people. If it is, that's fine. Allow yourself just to process that, write down any notes that you need to write down from that. That's a little, little bit of healing, right? a little bit of returning to wholeness, a little bit of returning to yourself, and it's a very beautiful experience to have. So now that that's done, we'll move on to step four because your job is to take care of yourself now. Right, There's things that happened in the past that you can't control, that they're done, that's already happened. What you can control is the present moment and how you move forward from that, what kind of attitude you move forward with. This is step four, which is anchoring into a new identity. Step four is to anchor into a new identity. Anchor into a new identity. So... If before you were coming more from a bit of a victim mentality or a bit of a people-pleasing mentality or something like that, who do you want to be moving forward? Who do you want to be moving forward? What's your new identity? Who do you intend to be? Do you want to be a leader? Do you want to be someone who is calm, peaceful, confident? Do you want to be someone who is having a high sense of self-worth, uh, a deep knowing that you are enough. Like, what do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Anchor into a new identity. Coming into the present, right? We've done a little bit of the past healing work. Now we're coming back to the present and we're going, okay, cool. If I could use my imagination and I could be whatever I want to be, right? I'm free from the shackles of, you know, what people told me about myself when I was younger. And I am free from the shackles of like the identity that I developed as a child. If I could be anything, it's almost like this childlike state of like, I could be anything I want to be. Who would you be? What would you be? What's this new identity that you want to anchor into? And this is really just an innocent practice of like, I can be whoever I want to be. I can create whatever life I want to create. And this is actually what we're going to be moving into, which is this, this final stage of creating. You've had a waking up experience. Oh my God, things are different. You've healed. Wow, I can understand where my patterns are coming from. And I've been able to give my younger self or give those memories in my brain a little bit of a, uh, a new molding. Moving back towards a state of wholeness, back towards a state of purity and innocence. And now I'm going to create whatever I want to create because I'm allowed to. So, what do you want to create? Who do you want to be? What's your new identity? Write it down, get very clear on it, 
you know, we, we've only got a certain amount of time today, but this is something that you can expand on. This is something that I do expand on a lot with my clients. It's like, who do you want to be? What do you look like? You know, what, what do you wear? How do you, um, you know, where do you live? Like, what do you do for work? What are your relationships like? What's your health like? Right. Like really, it's almost like you're painting a picture, painting a very clear picture or a visual visualization of the kind of identity that you want to move towards getting into the nitty gritty of the physical. How do you look? How do you feel? What thoughts are you thinking? What do you do for work? Where do you live? Who are you with? What do you wear? How do you hold yourself? How do you talk? How do you walk? <laughs> All that kind of stuff, right? Get very clear on that because you can create yourself. That's really the whole point, uh, I believe. One of the biggest things anyway is is we're humans, right? It's our job just to create ourselves in a sense. I really believe that. I really believe we can take create creative ownership over ourself, who we want to be. Imagine you're a tree, right? Or imagine you're a little seed, you know, you're a little seed, you've got a little seed and, you know, you plant it in the ground, right? And then over the years, that seed sprouts and it goes through its early like life when it's just a little frail little thing, you know, very susceptible to the environment and other influences around it. And it's like a little weedy thing that grows up. And then eventually it gets stronger. You know, 10 years, it's gotten a bit stronger. 20 years, it's stronger. 30 years, and it's like, whoa, this big tree. And it continues growing, right? Until, uh, you know, until it, uh, until it doesn't, <laughs> which is a season of life as well. But if you're that tree, how do you want to grow? You know, this is the big problem people have. They get stuck. Everyone feels stuck. Everyone feels like they've hit a plateau in their life. They're not moving forward. I'm stuck. What's going on? I'm bored. This is not it. Like, what, what's going on? It's because you've stopped growing. You have not You have stopped consciously and, and intentionally growing. You've just gone, okay, here I am. I'm an adult now. This is it. That's not, that's not how it goes, right? You, just, you grow forever right, until you're old. And then you gracefully stop growing. <laughs> Right. At least that's the hope. That's the wish. That's the dream. And it's a dream that's available to everyone. But I'm going on a bit of a tangent here. Who do you want to be? What's your identity? Anchor into that new identity. So once you've got a bit of an image of that, you've got uh, you've created an image of that. Then step five is to connect with your higher self. Connect with your higher self. And the way that we do this is really simple. We're going to do another short, tiny little meditation. Uh, it's not you, you don't even really need to close your eyes. The way I like to do this one is I can, just place your hand on your heart, left hand on heart, do whatever you want with your other hand, awkward hand over here, or just put it in your lap. You can close your eyes if you want. Sometimes it helps, but sometimes it doesn't. You don't even need to. Take a deep breath. When I connect to my higher self, I finally feel when I connect to my higher self, I finally feel. And what's the word that comes up for you? How do you feel? Right. You can take one breath, one inhale, one exhale, hand on heart, <clears throat> a moment of awareness. When I connect with my higher self, I finally feel. And how do you feel? Just write that down. Pop it in the chat box as well. I would love to know how you feel just in the chat box. Um, you can just type how you feel. What's the word? One word, or maybe it's two words, but how do you feel? Pop it into the chat box. I'd love just to, you know, we're coming towards the end of this call now. So I'd love to hear how people feel when they connect to their higher self. You can just pop that in the chat box. Blissful peace. Yep. Cool. Worthy. Exactly. So you know how in step two, I said that your external attachment, when I have this, what, this thing, I'm finally going to feel this way. I said, that's not true. This is proof. 
right? Maybe it was like, when I have a job or when I have money, I'll finally feel worthy. And now it's like, when I connect to my higher self, I feel worthy. So you can feel however you want to feel right now. You don't have to wait till you get that thing to feel that certain way. And if you, you're interested in any kind of like Dr. Joe Dispenza or any of this manifestation or, uh, you know, consciously creating your reality, a big part of it is feeling how you want to feel now, embodying the energy of what you want to feel now. People say fake it till you make it, but I honestly don't even believe it's faking it, right? Because you just did it. You just did it and it wasn't fake. It was real. It happened. You felt peace. You felt love. You felt compassion. You felt worthy. So it's not faking it. It's just an understanding that you can feel whatever you want to feel right now. It's an awareness, right? Cool. So how good is that? <laughs> How good is that? Love the words coming through. Yeah, worthy, peacefulness, love, compassion, forgiveness, blissful peace, all these amazing things. That's awesome. So that's step five, connect to your higher self. Step six, right, is integration. So this is where we, when it comes to creating, um, you know, your reality, it's good to have the feeling. It's good to go, yeah, I'm going to embody the feeling now. Great, very important. And you have to really put some steps in place. You have to make some changes in the physical world, right? Like we go on really, you know, earlier today I talked about how we've got this physical body and then we've got the subtle body, the mental and emotional, and then we've got the perspective behind all of that, the consciousness, the awareness, right? The, the soul, you could call it. So a lot of people try to change things in the physical and they just, they're really just like forcing and doing this and I'm doing that and I'm blah, blah, blah. And, and it, it starts, and a lot of people start in the physical. They think they need to start in the physical, change things in the physical. But what I'm suggesting is you start a couple of layers back at the soul. What does your soul really want, right? That's what we've, uh, that's what we've looked into today. We've looked into what does your soul really want? And then you change your feeling, you, you know, your thought. So changing, I'm, I'm coming into a feeling of awareness, of, of worthiness, of peace, of bliss, of love. And so you change those two parts of yourself first. They're actually easier to change. You've just changed them already, right? It's already changed. You literally just had a felt experience of them changing. So in that sense, half of the job's already done. You've got clarity of what you want and you've also started to change your feelings. Now, the physical world is the slowest densest grossest part of the human experience right you don't want to try and change it first you want to try and change the non-physical stuff first because that will then come through in your actions but you do also need to take some action right so step six integration what's one thing that you could start doing that's going to lead you towards this higher self that's going to lead you towards the identity that you want what's one thing to start that's going to lead you towards the identity that you want to adopt? What's one thing that you can stop that's not helping you get there? And then what's one thing that you can continue that you actually are already doing that's going pretty well? So integration, three things. One thing to start, one thing to stop, and one thing to continue. That's the integration. It's it's starting to take some action as well, right? We've we've done some work on the deeper level of awareness. We've done some work on changing the, the feelings around. And so we've done that. That's a bit of non-physical stuff, and that's great. But what's the physical actions that we can take as well? Because we do need to do those. We do need to be consistent. We do need to change our habits. We do need to change our lifestyle. We do, need to, we do need to start doing new things. We do need to stop doing old things. And we do need to continue doing the things that are working. So just get clarity on like, what are those things that you can start, stop and continue. Now, that brings us to the end of the session. Uh, one more thing that I'm going to talk about is the Conscious Creator Program because this is the coaching program I run. I've got, I just had a look, I've got one 
two, three, three of the, the members in here, Rach, Caitlin, and Luke. It's good to see you guys here. But yeah, I'm going to talk about this really quickly because I'm actually opening up a new intake for the program on the 8th of April. So a few weeks away now, the 8th of April, we're going to open up uh, a new intake. So you will be able to come in to the Conscious Creator Coaching Program if you want to. Uh, today, I've walked you through pretty much like the process on a micro level of what's involved, right? Obviously, uh, when you come into the program, we're working on awakening, healing, creating every single week. There's an awesome community, right? Really active, really engaged, sharing some amazing like uh, insights and awareness and knowledge and wisdom and information in the community. There's a classroom where there's a lot more content around this stuff, emotional healing, uh, self-mastery. Uh, there's a bit of like... Um, there's some bonus trainings on just other random things that people want, like time management, productivity, procrastination. There's a whole bunch of meditations. There's a whole bunch of different videos and stuff you can watch that are really great. That's in the classroom. And then there was also a coaching calendar. So every week I run coaching calls on Monday. Uh, so we all get together in a group and we do coaching calls where we, we walk through the an expanded version of the process that I've just shared with you here. So we walk through awakening, which is really that self-discovery process of getting clear on who you really want to be and how you want to live your life. And we really start to wake up to higher and higher levels of awareness, right? Which is a beautiful thing. Um, it's a great journey to go on. And then we do a lot of healing work as well. So going even deeper into these energy patterns, going deeper into this emotional like trauma, going deeper into the triggers, looking at where they come from, looking at how to resolve them, uh, moving back towards a state of wholeness and health and really just you know calmness and peace and self-confidence. Those are all, uh, I guess, outcomes from the healing work. And then we have a lot of work around creation as well. So we're actually moving into creation now. Uh, we do a, like a 12-week block, which is actually where we're at week 10 of the current block. And so that's why I said three weeks away from now, we're going to be launching the new block. Um, so we're doing a lot of this creation work now. It's a lot of this identity work, getting very clear on who you want to be and then what you need to do to make that happen. And then from there, it's really just step by step, right? step-by-step -step consistency, working towards the goal, right? And that's why it's really helpful to have a coach and it's really helpful to have a community because you have accountability, you have consistency, right? Like I've done coaching programs myself in the past. And one of the biggest things I notice is just being exposed to this kind of uh, work on a consistent basis is going to help you progress step by step by step. You know, not to mention open your mind up to totally new ways of thinking, uh, being connected to people who are on the same path, having a coach to also like pick out your blind spots and go, okay, you know, this is maybe a limited way of thinking or, you know, maybe just to keep you accountable and go, are you doing what you need to do this week? Like those kinds of things are very helpful. And the consistency of that over time is really what creates a massive change. So if you want to apply for the program, you can go onto the website and you can apply. I've just put the website in to the chat box here. It's just www.mindlaunch.com.au. If you have a look at my website, there's a link to apply. You can put your name, your email, your phone number, why you want to join. And then I will basically be in touch with you personally. Uh, you can access that link through my Instagram as well. And if you're on my email list, I'll send out an email with the replay of this uh, with, with a bit of a call to action as well to you know apply if you want to join the program. But yeah, that's going to be launching in the next few weeks. So I'm really pumped for that. It's going to be awesome. I would love to see some more of your faces in there. And that is it for today. So thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, thanks, Luke. 100% <laughs> worth it, guys. You really start to see the results from the start. Yeah. Thanks, Luke. Appreciate that, man. Um, so that's it, guys. Yeah, thank you. I hope you got something out of this. I think it was a pretty productive session. Um, hopefully, it was very informative for you. And hopefully, you've got something out of it. So if you do want to join, um, you know, just put an application through. If you have any other questions, you can always just shoot me a DM on Instagram or even just reply to one of my emails. I'm very responsive um, and I love hearing from you guys. So that's it for today. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. See ya. Thanks, Reese. Talk to you soon, man. Thanks, Sammy. Bye.